Hey everybody, welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, I am going to show you guys how to install the Carboy short throw shifter for the 2018 Subaru WRX STI. I'm sure this is very similar for the 04 plus models of the um, STI, but this is the one that I'm doing it on. You can still probably use this as a guide. Um, I'm gonna try to do my best to show you guys exactly how to do this. I'm also gonna do the front and the rear bushings so you guys can stay tuned for that if that's what you're gonna do. I do highly recommend doing those bushings with the install of the short shifter because that makes a world of a difference. Anyways, if you guys enjoy this video, please hit that like button, comment on what you guys want me to install next or any recommendations, um, and then I'll look into it. And then also subscribe for more videos. So anyways, have a good day, you guys. Thanks for watching and enjoy the video. Okay, so here we are with the box itself. Gonna go ahead and open it. So I'm opening it upside down so you guys, you know, don't see my address and all that. Not that you guys even care. So right here we got the front bushings. We got the rear bushing. And the shifter itself right here. And then it comes with the zip tie, or a couple zip ties. Perfect. And I don't believe there's anything else in here. Besides, uh, awesome receipt. We can dig in here a little bit more see oh i guess we don't have to cut it open which is nice so here's the shifter as you guys can see i'll show you guys the, the front bushings now these are stiff like these are some stiff bushings compared to what we're about to pull out these are like these are hard Now one thing I do got to say about uh, this rear bushing right here, I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways, but it does increase uh, the transmission noise. So you'll hear like a winding sound between first, second, and third gear. It'll be much more noticeable once the installation is finished. And um, I'm sure you guys will be able to tell when I'm um, driving what it sounds like. Some people don't like it. Some people love it. I don't care for it, or I don't really care. I mean, if it wants to wind and make noise, go for it. I'm here for the performance aspect of this install. Anyways, let's go ahead and get back into the STI and start tearing it apart. Okay, so first things first, I'm actually gonna go ahead and get the jack and jack this car up, put it on jack stands, and then we'll go from there. Alright, so to begin this install, what we're going to do is open up the center console, take out this little rug, and then you want to take out the Phillips screws in here, or you can actually use 10 millimeter bolts uh, or a socket wrench as well. That'll work, but I got this in my hand, so I'm just going to use this. I'm going to take those two screws out. Good place to put them is right there. All right, now that you got those, you can put the rug also back in there. You wanna get your hand and you wanna put it underneath this <clears throat> emergency brake 
and you want to push up on it right here just like that just kind of pull up on it there's gonna be another Phillips screw you want to take out of there be careful not to drop anything down there you're gonna have a very fun time looking for it so there's that screw just kind of close this so you don't have anything come flying out move this out of the way and just kind of push up on this and the whole thing should kind of move just kind of move it out of the way a little bit just enough to work with next you want to just take your shift knob off there's a shift knob Put that right there you want to grab on this top piece because there's two layers right here you want to grab the top piece you want to gently pry up towards you and up now be gentle don't push out too far because there's a connector that you want to pull or disconnect which is that light next just get the shifter boot just get it from on top there you go and uh, here's that little connector i was talking about so you want to push in that little tab and the connector disconnects and then just put this to the side so you want to get these two little plastic uh screws out i guess is what they are So kind of pry up on them while you're unscrewing them. That's how they come off. They're a little annoying, but do what you gotta do. There you go. I think maybe you might be able to just pull them off too. There we go. Let's put those to the side so we don't lose those. Now this assembly can come off right here. Also just comes off right over top just you know kind of be careful with it you don't want to rip anything and there we go put that to the side as well so we finally got to the main shifter there's gonna be a little pin right here you want to knock that out so I have a little pin uh, punch this is what I'm gonna be using right here just a little center cap punch whatever you call these things and you want to grab this pin and you want to punch it out of there so there's gonna be that little hole right there you want to get your little pin punch just want to punch it through gently because it'll come out as you can see it's coming out right there Now you just don't want this to go flying out. So just get some pliers and just pull that pin out. Definitely don't want to lose this guy, so put this guy somewhere where you're not going to lose it. Just put it in here. Now you can put that thing off to the side. So all this pretty much, don't lose this, but we're going to pull this off at the same time. All right, so now what you got to do after you got that little pin out, there's going to be this 12 millimeter bolt and uh, this 12 millimeter nut you want to take out. And this is where you're actually going to want to use two because it will spin on you. All right, so on to fun stuff. So there's going to be a C clip down here that you want to grab. This is where these uh, tools come in handy, or this tool comes in handy. So I'm going to go ahead and and there's that C-clip. Now what you got to do is take the zip tie out so that way the reverse lockout cable can separate. And then you can yank this thing out. Dang, everything's so greasy. As you can see the cable down here, it's gonna come out. So what you wanna do is you wanna just grab this. Don't lose any of these parts. Then you wanna yank this guy out. And just like that, it should pop right out. All right, so let's take this to a desk or a table and put all these little components onto the new shifter and uh, go ahead and put it in.
So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the two shifters. There's the stock one and there's the carboy one. What we have to do now is take off all these little components like the C-clip, the little ball joint thing, and uh, put it onto the carboy one. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. So we're going to go ahead and slip this one off, slip this off. So any type of component that moves, you need to take it off. Next you want to get a Phillips and remove these two bolts and then remove this as well. And that piece comes off, and then you want to take this rubber piece off as well. So reverse install it. So just put that on. This little piece, screw it on. Alright, now that we got that, we want to remove this C-clip. Put the C-clip back on as well. There we go. Now when you do remove this shifter, you want to make sure that these little seals, these rubber pieces, are, are still here. That they're not stuck or left inside the car, because you're going to need them both on here and onto the new shifter. Also, you want to grease this little ball up. So I got myself some grease. It's way too much. And just grease her up. Grease is your friend in this install because we're going to need it a lot for the bushings. Or not a lot, but you know, you're going to need the grease. Now that we're done with that, you want to go ahead and put this right back on like this, like so. Next, you got the little spring piece, and then there we go. So the whole shifter is assembled. Now this can go back into the vehicle. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and install this shifter back on. So go ahead and just pop it back into here. There we go. And then you want to pop that C-clip back in as well. So this thing can be a real pain sometimes, but you just got to find the right angle and make it get inside. So once you get the C-clip in there, you want to just get a flathead and really push it down on every side to get it inside of that groove that it needs to go into. All right, now after you got it seated, what you want to do is get grab this uh, reverse lockout cable. You want to put it in here. Just like so. After you got that cable in there, what we need to do is put that pin back in for the reverse lockout. But right now it's not showing up because remember we disconnected it and it kind of shot down. So there's actually a little technique or a little trick you could do to make that cable come back up so that way you can line it up and put the pin in there. And I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. It involves a, an Allen key or something similar to this and going underneath the car. So I'll take you guys there with me. So right where you're... Right where your downpipe and your midpipe mid connect, you want to go in front of it a little bit. And right there, that's uh, the reverse lockout, right where you see my Allen key just hanging. You want to stick your Allen key into the hole, and you kind of want to lodge it while uh, pushing it to the right. That way, when, it's, uh, when you do that, it gets stuck up and you can put the pin into the little cable. Very simple little uh, technique. Not sure if you guys can see that, but as you can see the hole, has popped up, lined up after I did the Allen key trick. And now you can put the little pin in there with no problem.
but I got that pin in here. You just basically gotta keep working it, get a light in there so you can line them up perfectly, and then just get a hammer and get the pin and just slowly hammer it in until you get it in. Try not to drop the pin, that's going to suck if you do. After you get that done, what you wanna do is just grab a zip tie and zip tie this wire. So I would do it once in the same spot it had originally, which was right here. Just like this. And I think, I think that'll be good with just one zip tie. Anyways, this little part I'm not gonna put on right now because I get, I'm gonna be doing the front and the rear bushings under the car and this will give more slack for me to do that. So if you guys are also doing the bushings, I would suggest leaving it just like this, doing the bushings and then coming back and putting this bolt in and finishing this install. Um, but otherwise we will come back to this. Let's go under the car and let's finally get those bushings in. This part sucks. But hopefully we can do it with no problem and hopefully we can get them out with no problem. So let's do it. All right, so we're gonna have to start off by removing this heat shield right here. So there's about, a, I think four bolts holding it up. So there's a bolt right here. There's a bolt right here. You got two all the way back here and then back here. And you may or may not need to actually get a wrench. All right, so right here, there's an O2 sensor. You're gonna need one of these tools to get that thing removed. So remove the O2 sensor, and then continue removing the heat shield. So that way you can actually fully remove this heat shield to get it out of the way completely. And it's gonna be the easiest to work right here and get those bushings out of the way. So let me just really quickly get that uh, O2 sensor out. I'm gonna get those two bolts out and then take this heat shield off. All right, now with the heat shield out of the way, you guys can finally see what we're working with. So right here, that is the rear shifter bushing that we need to remove. And then right there, get some light in there. That right there is gonna be the front shifter bushing, which is actually a two piece uh, combination with Cart Boy. But anyways, I'm going to show you guys me taking this off, but that's where it's located. Just those two bolts and then those two bolts right there. So I went ahead and took those two bolts out that hold the rear bushing in place. And those, they were actually very easy to get, to be honest with you. The angle is just right to get a ratchet in there with an extension just coming in. And then uh, get this bolt from this side and then get the other bolt from the other side. And I feel like these two will be just as easy with just some uh, wrenches. Alright, so I thought I would be able to do this without having to uh, take off this cross member support thing. But that bolt's too long. So I actually have to remove this. So what I have to do here, and sorry, the lighting is really bad. Let's take those two bolts off, these two bolts off, and those two bolts off. And then that cross member should come off, and then they'll get out of the way. Now this piece will come off. Kind of wiggle it out of there. Alright, so now when it comes to taking this bushing out, what I do is I stick a screwdriver into it, kind of shove it in, 
And after that, you can kind of use that to pry it out. Because all you want to do is get this lip to go inside, and you want to pry the thing out. I'm going to do this off camera because I'm filling up my SD card, and um, it's kind of hard to record and do everything at the same time with this little space to work with. So let me just get this bushing out, get that bushing out, and then uh, get to installing the other ones. All right, you guys, so the bushings are finally out. This is the stock. This is the aftermarket cart boys. So th this is the main difference, first of all. These are rubber, while these are some other material, way harder. They're like polyurethane or something like that. But you cannot like squeeze these or bend these that easy at all. These ones, they're definitely squashed, like squeezed. You can squeeze them for sure, look at that. Same with this thing, it's just rubber. This is a two piece design, it's hard to rock. Anyways, so yeah, let's get these things in here. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna record too much of me putting this back in, but what you guys pretty much wanna do is grease any contact surfaces, like the inside of this part, and um, like right here, and then um, that's pretty much it. Just reinstall everything the same way you took everything off. So I got the bushing in, it's all tightened down. Then I got the rear bushing in as well, also tightened down. So once you got uh, some grease on it, you got everything tightened down, you can go ahead and put the cross member back on that goes right here. Put those two bolts on, or all of them actually. These two, these two, and these two. Put the O2 sensor back on. After, or actually put the heat shield back on first and then put the uh, O2 sensor back on. All right, so after you guys have installed everything back, like this cross member right here, you guys can see the bushings are inside, the heat shield's back on, and then the O2 sensor is back in as well. Now, right before, since we're back down here, uh, remember that Allen wrench that we put in there? You can take that out now since we already connected the little uh, pin inside the car. So don't forget about that because you do not want to leave that there. That would not be good while driving. Anyways, so let's go meet back inside of the car and then let's finish this install. All right, so we're getting ready to finally put the rest of this together. So what we gotta do here is just put this last bolt in here. Oh yeah, one thing I forgot to mention is put some grease right here on these bushings. So I'm gonna go get some grease really quick and then I'm gonna do that. Just kind of wiggle it back and forth until you can get that bolt slid in. And there we go. All right, after you got that bolt in, just make sure you got the zip tie where you need it to be. Pinholes in. You want to make sure you check everything. Make sure you can get into every single gear. And it works, so time to put everything back together just how it was. So obviously first thing first is this thing right here. Next thing just kind of goes on like that. Then you get your little white clips. Now after you got that, So you want to kind of plug this thing in first. The light, and then you want to sh go in this way. Put in fourth gear, so you can slide it on a little easier. Just reverse install everything. So 
you want to thread these in with your hand first. Make sure you don't want to misthread them. Okay, that part's finished. Let's give me another screw right here. And last but not least, you just got this little bit left. Now these are just clips. Just kind of just clip it on. There's this little tab right here you want to put this clip onto. And to finish it off. I love it. All right, everybody. So that pretty much concludes the install video for this cardboard short throw shifter. If I left anything out, uh, feel free to leave it in the comment section. I try to be detailed and explain everything to do with this thing. But yeah, I love this shifter. This is awesome. I'm gonna be doing another POV drive video soon and um, get some footage of me using the shifter. Anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you guys have a wonderful day. Peace out.